listeners, welcome back to the Mujeron podcast. I have someone very special today because it is our first non-Latina invitation. And I'm excited because although our community and our platform is very much focused to our Latina community, it's important to also in be inclusive. And today we have Peggy. She is a singer, songwriter, an entrepreneur based in London. So today we have someone all the way from London. That alone is exciting. And when I first connected with her, what I loved most was that she told me she had lived in Spain. So she felt a little bit Latina and I felt like that was super cool to have someone identify with us in our culture. And I wanted to bring her on because she is going to help us today to talk a little bit more about procrastination how we can defeat that, what kind of habits we can put into our life so that we can really get to work and get those goals going. So please help me welcome. Heggy, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. What a pleasure. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about your story and about yourself. Yeah, sure. So I'm originally from Norway, so true Scandi. <laughs> and I did live in Spain for a few years and I loved it. Me encanta. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just feel so, even though I'm not Latina, as you say, I feel like I have a little bit Latina in me for that experience. And, you know, I think it, it changed me so much. I just love the culture and the people and, and the language and everything. Yeah. So uh, I always feel a bit identified with uh, the Latina community, even if I'm not technically a Latina myself. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'm a singer songwriter as well. So very creative, passionate about music. And last year I launched a business called Feminifique, which is all about empowering and inspiring women to live their best lives. Um, and basically it's a fusion of personal development and, and spirituality and psychology. So it goes really in depth and um, yeah, I, I find that there's a lot of information out there to help and inspire women, but a lot of it is very samey and some of it can be a bit surface level. So I wanted to create something that was a bit more unique and tailored specifically to women with feminine energy and things like that in mind. And it's what I use in my own personal life and what I've used for my own transformation. So yes, yeah, so I'm very passionate about sharing it. Yes, I love that you also kind of do more than one thing, right? You're a singer songwriter, you started this movement as well, and uh, you're an entrepreneur. So, so many different hats. When it comes to procrastination, how have you been able to kind of manage all of the things? Because I think sometimes it's, it gets a bit hard, right? And I know there's a lot of women listening to us who are mothers, who are wives, who have many other hats like us, but I wanted to get your perspective on how you're able to juggle all of those things. Yes, and I, I agree. I think that procrastination is something all of us have struggled with at some point, and sometimes we struggle with con on a continuous basis. And for me, being so busy, I've had to find ways to just be able to keep staying productive. And I think there are lots of different ways that we block ourselves and we end up procrastinating. And it could be a variety of different reasons. And I think the first thing is establishing why we procrastinate in the first place. I think a very common reason is overwhelm. When there's so many things that has to be done, you can get really overwhelmed and you don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So that's a big one. And I think also, so another reason people procrastinate, especially women, actually, is a lack of self-care. I think as women, we have this tendency to nurture. We want to take care of everyone. And we often put our own well-being at, you know, at the back of our priorities and when actually it should be at the front. So there is this idea of if, if I take some time out, I will not get as much done because I want to get this done rather than taking time out for me. Whereas actually it's the other way around. So we have to have this long-term approach of thinking, how can I be productive long-term, not short-term? Because we may be able to get a lot of things done short-term, but if we don't have that sustainable plan and have self-care as number one, we won't be able to be productive long-term. 
Um, and that's something that I've experienced myself. You know, I'm very ambitious and very hardworking. So I've learned the hard way that if I put my self care last, I end up burning out and I lose time in the long run. I end up kind of defeating myself. So I've had to um, force myself to do self care, even when I actually want to be working or do something else. Because, you know, when you love what you do, it's, it's hard to take breaks. Um, but I think it's really important to have that discipline. So that's definitely number one. Um, and I think a lot of women can probably, it's a, a, a difficult sort of bad trap to fall into. Um, and I think with another reason when it comes to, you know, procrastination, I think there can be a lot of other deeper lying issues why we procrastinate as well. And I think there are surface level issues and then there are some more deep seated issues. Sometimes the surface level issues can just be things like, oh, I'm a bit lazy or I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not disciplined enough. I don't have a strategic plan in place. And those are sort of easy fixes that you can quite, you know, you can put together a, a strategic plan that's sustainable and that incorporates, you know, self-care and all of that stuff. It just takes a bit of time to actually sit down and, and create that and be organized and actually plan out your week. Having that routine and those habits, I think is very important as well. So I do a weekly plan every single Sunday. I plan my week, I plan my days. You know, I think it's so important to have a realistic plan now, with more deep-seated things, I think sometimes we actually self-sabotage. We have time, we can do it, but with some reason we don't end up doing things that we actually want to do. And, and this is where it's very useful to, to either get a coach or to, to do some work on yourself to analyze why is it that I'm not following through. Because I think when we say to ourselves, I'm going to do this, and then we don't do it, we are betraying ourselves we're not and then we lose trust with ourselves and it becomes this vicious cycle mm -hmm. so a lot of the time we we want to do something or create something because we want to create uh, something new in our lives you know whether it's a business or it's it's motherhood or whatever it might be it's different for everyone but it's something new we want to create and sometimes that scares us and we're not even aware of it we, we, we're very comfortable in some ways where we are right now. And even though we're not consciously aware of it, by us taking that action and then leading to the outcome that we want, it would also lead to a loss of something else. And sometimes that we're afraid of losing something that we have that would be then substituted for something new. Yeah. And so subconsciously, therefore, we don't take the action because actually we're afraid of the outcome, you know? And, um, and that's very normal as well. And the, the powerful thing about that is that we're not aware of it, right? So when we're not aware of something, it ends up really ruling our actions and our, our decisions. So the first step is always to become aware. It's very useful to do some journaling around this, you know, what is it that I want to create? If I create this, what will I lose? right because sometimes that can there's something we're going to lose as well it may not be a big thing but there's some comfort or some status quo that is going to disappear and sometimes that can make us uncomfortable yeah there's so many things you touched on that i can completely identify with and one of those things and i think it's something that i've worked really hard at and i continue to work on is that fear, right? That fear mm -hmm. of <clears throat> that transition, that change, either if it's fear of succeeding, right? And mm -hmm. having to drop certain lifestyles because now, hey, you're busier, you have more to do, you have uh, this commitment, right? That was one of the biggest reasons why for me, I procrastinated doing mm -hmm. this podcast because I knew the type of commitment that it was going to take of me to having now have this platform where I had to show up every week. Mm. And that to me was a little scary. Also, now my transition into motherhood, that was really difficult at first, because I always had this picture in my head of 
all the dreams and goals that I wanted to reach. And for some reason, when I thought about motherhood, it really scared me to now have to step into this role where I knew I was going to just love it so much that maybe I was going to leave behind some goals. But it wasn't until I was able to meet women through this community and see them still be great mothers and be great entrepreneurs, um, great women of business, great just women in general that I really realized it's possible. You know what I mean? It's possible. When it comes to self-care though, what would you say would be like the first step we can take? Because I think we would be surprised how many times, or if we asked ourselves, how many times do we really allocate self-care? And we'd be surprised how, how often we don't. So what mm -hmm. would you suggest we do in order to at least start getting that self-care schedule? Yeah, you know, I think that um, I'm very passionate as well about doing self-care in a way that is in alignment with feminine energy. Because I think a another reason why women tend to burn out is we operate in this masculine energy uh, that society is built on, this linear energy that doesn't really work with our innate energy. So it's things like the menstrual cycle. It's a very easy place to start. You know, I think a lot of women feel pressured to go, 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 even if it's their time of the month, where it's actually from nature's perspective, I feel like that's a time where you are supposed to rest and, you know, get creative, get ideas and go within. And there is value in that also. And I feel like in society, we've lost touch with the value of doing that, whereas actually that's equally important uh, so that you can then take actions later on in the month. So starting to be aware of your cycle, I think is very important for women because we are cyclical beings and we, we, we don't have that linear progressive energy. We've got that cyclical energy. And I think we have to work with it rather than against it so that we can operate at our optimum levels. Uh, and I would say the same thing goes with the seasons as well. You know, not having the same schedule in winter as you do in summer. Um, and for me, this has been really transformative, you know, really living in harmony with nature and your cycle as a woman and the cycles of, of, of nature. So in winter, you know, having more rest, sleeping a bit longer, um, you know, and, and in summer you can get up earlier and, and be a bit more of a hustler. I think it's really important to have that balance because, you know, according to Chinese medicine and things like that as well, which I really believe in, we store up energy in the winter. So if you really push yourself too hard, you're kind of depleting your energy levels. And, and it's also believed, you know, that when we are on our monthly cycle as women, we lose prana, we lose life force energy. It's a time to really go within and honor ourselves as women and really nurture ourselves. So even if we start by at least honoring that and taking really good care of ourselves at that time of month and really listening to our bodies, listening to that cycle. Uh, I think that's a really good place to start. That's not so overwhelming for people. Yeah, that's so interesting. Really focusing during that time and taking it slow. And I think also identifying like, what are the things that you enjoy when it comes to self-care, right? Because I think that social media in general has really depicted this picture of, you know, getting in the hot tub and getting your nails done, maybe doing some facials and self-care can really look different for everyone. Mm -hmm. For example, I hate getting my nails done. Oh, really? I love having my nails done, but I hate the process. Right. I don't know yes. why, but it seems like a chore to me having to go and wait and then you know the problem <laughs> I'm gonna be the only weird one if anybody else please let us know um but it, it just feels like such a, a chore for me and I think that mm -hmm. when maybe when I go out and have like a walk or things like that are more of for me self-care mm -hmm. it, it's uh, especially where I live now like there's so much beautiful like scenic views you know mm. I have the lake right around so like going and seeing the sunset or things like that really fuel me in the morning seeing just like the sun reflect on the lake and things like that so I think really 
identifying what fuels you and what makes you feel good. Mm. Sharon, what are your self-care routines or maybe like your rituals? Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I think, um, like you said, it's different for everyone. It's basically something that replenishes your energy at the end of the day, whatever makes you feel replenished, whether that's a bath or a walk in nature or meditation. Um, for me, I, I love walking in nature as well. That really always replenishes me. And uh, I do love a, a good bath <laughs> as well. Um, good bubbly bath. Um, but I think also really important, I know people talk about this a lot, but I do think it's very important to have a morning routine, you know, how you start the day. Um, I really like visualizing as well, you know, taking mm. time to visualize. And, and I think th this idea that we have to always be busy and do something in order to be productive is, is not true. I think sometimes it's equally productive to sit down and meditate or sit down and, and visualize um, and really feel into that energy because everything is energy at the end of the day. So it's about maximizing that energy. And, uh, and like you say, finding things that really replenishes your energy. And I think that also depends a bit on whether you're introverted or extroverted. You know, some for some people it can be going out, actually can replenish their energy if they go out and meet their friends. For me, not so much because I'm introvert. So I would be much more, you know, I need my own space. <laughs> But yeah, I think just listening into what gives you energy when you think of self-care, I think it's important to connect it to what makes you feel energetic afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the goal, you know. Absolutely. And I am so glad that you mentioned how sometimes we have this idea that hustling and just doing the thing is what productivity means when, you know, just feeling and visualizing meditating journaling all those things are also as productive it's been a process for me to understand that maybe 10 things to get done one day is not so you know possible but maybe three yeah. to four really important things to get done mm. have worked for me and I think that's again it comes back to the productivity right how many things mm -hmm. are you crossing off of your list this day um, that we really think about and it, it's sort of overwhelming and I think a lot of it has been on social media just like doing and doing and like you mentioned just taking those breaks are really important as well mm. that makes I feel like I'm just having all of these aha moments through this conversation okay. I'm glad <laughs> <laughs> because it, I think it's a process right and even through uh, what we're talking about here, whatever works for us, it's going to take time for us to figure that out. Yes. Um, do you have anything to say on that? Yes, I, I, I wanna say a few more things about plans. And that is that firstly, like you say, a plan is a process. You know, I'm always revising and, and changing my plans up because you find what works and you tweak it. So it's not like you have a plan and you have a system and you have to stick with it for life. It evolves and changes as you realize what works and what doesn't work. And, and that can change throughout our lives and our faces. Sometimes we may have more time, sometimes we have less and we adjust accordingly. But I also think that when we plan, uh, again, being a bit aware of, like you mentioned, like 10, 10 things a day or five things a day, I think also it's important to maybe categorize things. You know, is this a really important thing that's gonna take me a long time? If this is a really time consuming energy, uh, a thing that takes a lot of energy, you probably don't want 10 of those, right? That's not going to be achievable. Whereas if you have five little things that you can do in 10 minutes, you could probably put th those in and then maybe one or two bigger tasks. So I think being aware of as well, rather than just having a list of tasks, what kind of tasks are they? How time consuming are they? How much energy do they need? If it's a you know, you could even color code if you want to do that and make it fun. You know, if it's like a red item, it's it's like, OK, maybe rare one red item a day and five yellows. You know, uh, I think it's important to do that as well, because otherwise we just have a list of things and we haven't considered the energy it's going to take from us for us to do those things. And then we end up defeating ourselves when we feel like we haven't ticked off everything on our list. Yes. And then we feel like we failed. Right. We don't want to set ourselves up to feel like we failed. So, yeah, we want to feel like we've succeeded, you know, at the end of the day. Definitely. One of the things that I think helped me a lot, too, when it came to procrastinating, start procrastinating 
certain um, tasks was delegation. Delegation for me has been something that really helped me when doing things and, and when I would procrastinate on things that I really did not want to do. Uh, especially with my parents' business, like there was a lot of bookkeeping stuff that I was like, uh, you know what, like, I don't think I want to do this myself. So mm -hmm. delegating really helped me clear up that part. What would you give us advice? Like if we haven't really looked into delegating, if we have a very, very smaller business, maybe we mm -hmm. don't want to do that. Do you have any advice on how to even start? Yes, I think that, you know, for me, I'm obviously just a, a new business as well. And I'm doing everything at the moment myself, but I'm actually planning on uh, getting a, a VA to just help me a little bit with social media. So that's just one thing that I know that I don't really have time to do and I don't really want to be doing myself. Uh, I sort of learned the hard way that I just won't be doing that because I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I think that Obviously, you know, being aware of, you know, if you if you can afford to outsource anything and if not, but um, I think that if you can, it's it's probably a good idea to start small like like I'm doing, because like you say, it's hard to do everything and some things we are not motivated to do because it doesn't really fill us with joy and it, it's just time consuming and 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 takes a lot of energy and um and sometimes there's a lot of value in in giving that away to someone else so i would say start small but maybe make a list you know uh of again i love a list <laughs> of what it is that you need to do and what it is that you could outsource and and what it is that you enjoy doing what it is that you don't enjoy doing because the things that you don't enjoy doing you know you could probably spend that time on on other things that's better for you long term so yeah obviously it depends where you are in your business but I think delegation is a big thing um one thing with delegation I guess is the loss of control right you know when you do everything you know that when you get it done you get it done good and it's really hard I that's one thing that I find really hard is trusting that to another person because I you know I know that everything I do is like quality and it's hard to then bring in someone else but it's just has to be done and you you find someone but i think yeah that loss of control can also be um an issue with delegation of course yeah and i think you mentioned a very key word in this and it's just that sometimes we just don't want to get those things done right sometimes we just don't want to do them and i yeah. think that with that we sometimes feel like is am I wrong for feeling this way mm. you know this is business it should be hard but I think that we need to really change the narrative there and and allow ourselves to say like hey I'm not strong in this area I mm. know I'm probably not gonna do the best if I if I take on this part of the business mm. so maybe looking out for help um, a lot of the things that I love to do as well is look at how you can do a trade with people. Mm -hmm. um, you have a platform, they have a platform and maybe trading like the things that you each do so that then maybe starting, you know, that would be a great way to do it. So that's some of the ways that I've done it before. And um, I've worked with VAs before as well and they've been amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and we recently hired on two interns for Mujeron so now that we have a bigger platform and like that, that also helped us. But I think that was such a game changer for me. So I wanted to make sure that we touched a little bit on that as well. Anything else that you want to tell women or give them an advice when it comes to overwhelm, procrastination and all of that? Yeah, I think, you know, women have a tendency to be very hard on ourselves, you know, and we expects a lot from ourselves we are the caretakers we're nurturers and um yeah it's it's uh sometimes we we don't give ourselves the credit and we're hard on ourselves when we don't deliver and I think we need to be kinder to ourselves we need to you know praise ourselves more you know even if we haven't done everything on our list it's okay you know there's a new day tomorrow 
And uh, I, I think just beating ourselves up a lot less, I think is very important and realizing, you know, you are at the right stage where you're meant to be right now and not everything has to be done right now. And I think also that's a lot where overwhelm comes from this feeling of everything needs to get done now, you know, and, um, and sometimes the impatience as well, impatience, which I believe stems from fear a lot of the time, you know, we, we set certain deadlines for ourselves that sometimes don't serve us. And we believe, oh, we have to get to a certain point within a certain time frame, whereas everything is really fluid and it's all just a continuous journey. And I, I also really believe that, you know, as long as we keep moving forward, we're on the right track and that it's more about who we're becoming than what we do, because what we do is a result of who we're becoming anyway. So I think it's really important to remember that and to have that big picture, to remember that, you know, this is about me becoming and everything that I do is a result of that. And as long as I keep, you know, moving forward, then I'm doing good. Wow, that is amazing. Yes, I want to clap here because <laughs> that's definitely something I've been going through and um, realizing how you don't have to do everything right now. A lot of times we compare ourselves with other entrepreneurs or other platforms and it's just realizing that, hey, like you said, you know, taking that time of really focusing on where we should, what we should be working rather than like, where should we be at this point mm -hmm. was also something that really helped me just stop and and realize what it actually is that one I wanted to do and two my community actually needed of mm -hmm. me right and how I could really contribute to their growth as well thank you so much Heggy for saying that where can we find you find more about you yeah of course um so my instagram is at femnifique and the instagram is well the instagram is at femnifique the website is femnifique.com uh, and with my music, which will be coming out later this year, it's uh, Heggy Music at Heggy Music and HeggyMusic.com. So uh, that's where you can find me. And thank you so much for having me. I see that. That's it. <laughs> thank you so much. And we'll, we'll definitely put all your information on the show notes so our mujerones can go ahead and look you up, support you, and we'll be cheering you on. Thank you so much for all of this knowledge, all of these really, really good advice. I really appreciate you. And I hope this is like the first collaboration of many. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me. And well done for everything you're doing as well. I love the Mujeron movement. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gracias, amigas, for tuning in. This is another episode of the Mujeron podcast with Heggy. We will see you guys next week.